Welcome to the podcast, Eye for Talent, the show where we've got an eye for talent. I'm your host, Dylan, aka DJ Serial Sauce. I'm a YouTube content creator, Twitch streamer, producer, writer, sort of voice actor, maybe a little bit. Um, I should have a really have a list down for these kinds of things because I feel like I always have a, a list in my head and then I forget when I start. Um, but it doesn't matter because this isn't about me. Joining me is uh, Boom555, aka Boom. Um, I don't know if he has any other names. I'm sure we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> He, he he wanted me to keep it vague, so he just said, yeah, "I'm a YouTube and Twitch content creator." Um, you know, now now that I say that, it's it. This makes it sound like I didn't know that before coming in here, anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm a fraud. Um, no, I I to to really, I mean, to, to get things kicked off, really, I mean, like, uh, I don't want people thinking that like I don't know the people that I'm talking to. I I do like a fair amount of research. If it's somebody I don't know, I was lucky in this case because. <laughs> this is a person who I like consume a decent amount of their content. So like, I know what I'm getting myself into. I'm a goddamn professional. Yeah. I've seen you around. <laughs> Thank God. That'd be even more awkward if it's like, it's like I get around, I know what I'm getting myself into. And then, the, and, and then the other person's like, I don't know who this man is. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, I, I'm not great at names, but it's some reason internet handles are easier. Oh yeah. Easily. They're just, they're so much funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's, I, I have the benefit of, um, <clears throat> of having a very specific way with the way that I talk in people's chats to the point where even if I'm only in there a couple of times, they know who I am. And so mm-hmm. that's why, that's why I have the benefit of being able to do this kind of thing. Cause like, um, most of the people that I've talked to, especially if those people are Twitch streamers, it's like, I'm in their streams at least like once every other, if not once every stream that they are doing. So like they know my name. And so it's a lot less awkward when I have to type out that like paragraph of a long message trying to explain to people <laughs> like, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to like mooch off of your success. I just want to talk to you because I, I clearly enjoy the content you do. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. And I, even if you didn't personally enjoy, I think just saying, you know, the reaching out, I, it, it's hard to come across, I think, as that way if your message isn't. <laughs> <laughs> too presumptuous yeah because <laughs> i do get some like i'm not by any means a big creator but i get a lot of spam yeah <laughs> so i get a lot of spam and then like just really <laughs> low effort stuff like that and so what it's very obvious and i imagine more so as you grow yeah that makes sense. I mean, and then and then you kind of get into the echelon where like uh, other people are trying to scam other people using you <laughs> like, you, you know, the, like the YouTube bots that go to your name and they're like, you've just won a thing. Go to this oh, telegram. Yeah. It's like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a good YouTube bot assault in a long time. Oh, that's good. That's, yeah. you know. I don't know if that's a, as a result of the YouTube bots being fixed or if that's a result of you not being at that echelon yet, with all due respect. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound like a dick when I say that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, I, who knows? Who knows? I'm just avoiding it. Yeah, I believe that too. But, um, man, I, okay, normally this isn't a question that I ask people because it seems, it's like pretty obvious. Like if they're a content creator with, with a certain aesthetic and a certain face on the internet, I usually know the answer behind this question. But with you, it's so like out of left field. No, it's not out of left field. It's just like, you know, why does anybody have any of the names they do? You know what I mean? And so it's like, yeah, like, where did you come up with your internet handle? And also why the goose aesthetic? What's what's going on here? Uh, I'll, I'll do the goose first because that's easier. Um, <laughs> just one of the obviously not rock and face cam, uh, just not my thing. I wanted the mascot for the channel and goose is just that right level of gremlin energy mixed with the fact that we were playing fall guys at a lot of the time. I got the goose skin in that. And so the running joke was just the goose is loose (laughs) running around being a little shit. (laughs) (laughs) So I just carried that over. It's the right attitude for a not at all serious, loud, fun group, I think. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. (laughs) An obnoxious in your face thing that everyone still somehow loves, even though in real life you get chased by them and no one wants to be around them. (laughs) Yeah, it's like (laughs) then you get things like Goose Game and who who doesn't love and yet fear 
the goose. <laughs> It, I think it's love out of mutual respect, even though the goose doesn't have that same level of respect back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you respect the hustle that little little shit's getting into to chase away, you know, the two hundred pound muscular man from the pond. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then as the name, <laughs> I made it when I was thirteen. So there's not a, not a ton of thought into it, as you can probably imagine. <laughs> me and my friends just we'd yell boom a lot just as a random like boom headshot you know boom gotcha we're playing halo 2 land halo 2 events and so i stole it and i i stole the name so that whatever they said it i'd be like yeah it did basically 13 year old humor wow that's you suck so i stole it <laughs> i stole it for me and then the group slowly had to stop saying it because I ruined it by answering yes. Um, and then 555 five, five is even dumber because I was on it. I thought dumb 13 year old me got an Xbox 360 that came with a month free of Xbox Live. Uh, I thought it was from when you bought the Xbox. So I was on a time crunch and I needed numbers. And there was a Domino's commercial on and they had a 555 five, five deal. And I was like, okay, sick. Though it's meant to be. There's my numbers. What the and, fuck? Yeah, <laughs> thought about it a lot over the years, changing it. Uh, most people that made a, a mine was a gamer tag, but whatever lingo online handle. Uh, it grew on me over time. I feel like most people's changed theirs from when they were 13, but mine wasn't edgy enough to need to be changed. Oh, yeah, you're just like, this is a little embarrassing, but it doesn't, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like XX Blood Slayer 420, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, a, a bunch like me and a bunch of my friends have gone through like an infinite amount of. They've never really been like set in stone handle changes, but they've definitely been handle changes um, mm -hmm. because of like that same thing. <laughs> Except it's just like it's like what were your influences when you were when you were growing up around the Xbox 360 and then like as those change you change your name and yeah and, and you know despite the fact that my name has been the same for I don't know I'm gonna say like six or seven years maybe longer my friends will still refer to me by my, by my other tag just to be obnoxious I'm like I hate you <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy yeah I never thought about it but I've I've been at least online using that. For like 17 years or so now. Golly, Jesus. It'd be, it'd be weird to be anything else. Yeah, that makes sense. Because that, that is also the same energy of like when you have a friend who has the same gamer tag and then you <laughs> and then you and then you like or ha who has had the same gamer tag for a very good portion of the time that you've known them. And then they change it one day and you're like, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm locked in at this point. Yeah, like if I saw your videos come across my feed and it was under a different name, I'd be like, either someone is stealing his content or he got hacked. And I don't know <laughs> what's going God. on. <laughs> I, I do wish I'd named the YouTube channel something else, though. It's, it's a very awkward name for a channel. <laughs> but to your point, too far in. We've come yeah. too far at this point. Too committed to the bit. Yeah. Yeah, the the it, I thought I thought that we were going to go a little bit longer before having to make some my references already. But the Domino's five, five, five commercial reminds me of <laughs> of one very specific clip from a video that you did where okay. you were like, you were like, what the hell is the name of that law firm? And they just bought the number eight, 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 eight. eight. Like, that's, that's what that reminds me of. God. I fucking love those law, especially I grew up in the South and those law firms there are just parodies of themselves. And that, that one was real. I don't remember who, but there was a commercial that just said, press eight until we pick up yeah. something like that. Yeah. I'm trying to remember exactly what the, what the joke was that you made at the time. It was just like, it was just like, keep pressing eight until your problems are solved or some shit. <laughs> something like that. So that was what that, what that reminded me of, but no, that actually, I don't, I guess this is, hold on, because you have such a batshit insane story, I think this is the perfect time for me to explain to people what the story behind my name is, because I don't know if I've ever gone on record on this podcast, or really anywhere explaining this. Yeah, go for it. I, you know, South Park, the stick of truth? 
Yep, love those both those games. Yeah, shouts out. I was how old was I? I, I think I was like. When did that game come out? I think I was 13 or 14 when the game came out, which I guess that shows the age difference at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was, I think I was working. <laughs> um, but no, I had just gotten that game and I was playing it with my friend and uh, this, oh shit, this game came out in 2014. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say I was probably 13 or 14 when this game came out and they let you make your own name, although it didn't matter because they just called you some offensive name after the fact. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And so, so my, mean? yeah, exactly. And so my, my friend gave me a made up tag DJ cereal sauce. And I think because it was this, it was, a, that was the joke because this was in the era of like a is your boy skinny penis type. Like, oh yeah. I, it, the DJ killer keem star. Yeah, exactly. Shit yeah. like that. And Everyone. So, yeah. DJ was pretty common. Yeah. And so he gave me that. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know where he came up with that idea. I think that just was the inspiration. So that's that's the name that he gave me. And I don't think I even used that for a few years after when that game came out and I was playing it until I was probably. I don't know. I think I was probably 16, maybe 17 when I made that as like an official tag. And now that's a good one. Yeah, it, it rolls off the tongue. It gives you a lot of different ways to say it and makes it very easy. But it's also long enough and memorable enough that people will remember it when they see it. Yeah, and uh, my big thing, no numbers. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, hold on. No numbers, best part of my tag ever. Yeah, good luck getting boom without oh, yeah. any numbers. Yeah, well, counter argument, try getting, uh, good luck getting boom 555 five, five with no extra numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've lost boom 555 five, five a handful of times, and I'm I think some of them were to the past versions of me, and I don't have the email anymore. <laughs> It's like I I know for a fact no one else is bothering with this stupid five 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 handle, right? So whenever I go on to like Blizzard, I think is one, and it's already registered. I know that's me, but I also know that's me from an email I made in 2010 just to make this. So I I guarantee you I can't get that back. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that about is right. the nice thing. I'm pretty confident every time I've lost the numbers, it was me. I think I'm my enemy. <laughs> I am the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't get over the the whole just like like everything. The, everything that exemplifies who I am and who I play with is just a goose. I'm like, that's <laughs> you know, that's good. Yeah, I went with the goose model because I'm fine without just no face cam. Uh, but a friend, uh, Mo Mero, another Smite streamer, just made it for me just out of the blue. So I just decided to throw it on. People liked it, so I kept it on. Yeah, it is pretty funny. Yeah. So- <laughs> Especially because I just there's just like there's like a lot of YouTuber esque content that I watch, and a lot of them are playing like Stardew Valley or like a <laughs> fucking or um, what's another game that they play, Hollow Knight or other things like this. And then I tune into a Smite stream, and it's just honk, <laughs> just chaos. Uh, so it, it's I I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. I, I think it's that people have given me more in depth like reasons behind why they have the name that they have and some of it makes like more sense yeah there's there's not mine's not that deep (laughs) mine's pretty surface level yeah no that's fair i mean but i yeah and like i i can't be the only person who's asked this question how many times have you had to explain this story to other people uh not that much honestly it's it doesn't come up as often as you'd think probably like N total times. Fair enough, yeah. Because I imagine most of the time, if you have like a memorable username, people aren't going to ask you where it came from. They're going to go, Haha, that's funny, and then move on. Yeah, and for Boom, I think it's too like, where's that from? Oh, it's it's the, it's an onomatopoeia. You know, there's not, yeah, it's not like I'm going to have to describe, oh, it's from this, it's a rare reference to this, oh, I really like this author and one of their lesser, no, I just... <laughs> You're like, have you, you ever seen a cartoon word. explosion? Yeah, four letter <laughs> word, and it's not censored. Yeah. <laughs> it's about as deep as it goes. So I think it's less that uh, that and more so just that 
it doesn't warrant. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't questioning. elicit that kind of response. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell it ain't that deep. Yeah. No, that's fair. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, let me see here. So this is this is this is stupid because this is a question that I had to like use my brain when I was thinking about like how I was going to structure this. So there's basically three main things that I'm interested in, which is you right. pl- you playing Smite as like a hobby in like in just playing the game. You right. getting into making general YouTube content, you getting into uh, mi- just like Twitch streaming, and then how all of those kind of interconnect with each other. Mm. So just like that whole timeline, I guess. Like, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I can go the timeline, I think, is the best way. So I actually tried once in like 2014 to do the YouTube thing. I like bought a capture card, struggled through. The videos are fucking awful. As every first YouTube, you know, I'm not even trying to play it down. It's it was a new YouTuber. They're not well done. Yeah. Uh, but that, just for fun, uh, gave up on it, moved, whatever. COVID hit. <laughs> I was laid off. All of a sudden had an infinite amount of free time and everything was closed. Uh, so we're all pretty much just playing games all day anyway. <laughs> but why not? Why not kick it back up? Uh, So I just started initially just for fun. The only people ever supposed to see the videos were the people in them. Yeah, sounds about right. (laughs) So so made it for them and then just got pestered into making a Smite video. Honestly, I didn't think Smite was funny enough to make videos on. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So I was making uh, whatever else we were playing and then we were still playing a ton of Smite as our main game. I just didn't find it funny enough, so I didn't bother. And I just I recorded one specific clip from a first video. If you've seen it, there was. Really in the weeds, Smite nonsense, but essentially (laughs) the wave was getting stolen by some our other friend. And the uh, one of them, one of the two people in that clip pestered me for weeks saying like, oh, you need to finish a smite video so I can see that. And <laughs> this one clip of the minions being dragged away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was just uh, it was it was it was a decent clip, whatever. But he just really wanted to see that clip because he remembered it. And I said, whatever throughout. I, I, I think at the time I was trying to make videos that were like eight plus minutes so i just throw out a four minute something smite one just so we'd get off my back fair uh, <laughs> and then the smite subreddit unlike all the other games i was playing at the time doesn't have anything against self promo so i dropped it on there and uh shockingly worked out huh okay yeah, uh- right <laughs> <laughs> that's just and then i mean yeah I from then twitch was just an afterthought i i was doing youtube people would kept asking if i had a twitch so yeah might as well make one you're like all right fine here i am yeah yeah so that, that was more of an afterthought because i'm i as a consumer i watch youtube a lot more than i watch twitch i just prefer edited stuff yeah no th- yeah I was actually trying to look at something because I'm, I'm just now thinking like the fact that like now you also have this doesn't sound like it's necessary. I'm, we'll get more into the specifics of this later, I'm sure. But it doesn't sound like this is even necessary. But you at least have like stream stuff at your disposal as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I do. I did dive in if, whenever I decided to do it. I did. I don't know. It feels weird calling myself a Twitch streamer because it's. To me, it's still sort of just like the place where I interact with people and then I go do the YouTube stuff. Right. Right. And then most of the smite scene, I feel like are primarily Twitch people. I, I, I'm always hesitant saying I'm, I'm like a Twitch guy. Cause frankly, as much as I love doing the streaming, I'm a lot more proud of the YouTube side. It's an infinite more amount of time put into it. You know, whereas Twitch is, I just show up and have fun. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you got a participation trophy for showing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so like YouTube I I tend to favor that side more just because it's where more effort has to go into, but yeah, I guess also I do Twitch. <laughs> yeah, no, that's to be that's kind of to be expected because it's like I I feel like a lot of people if they stream and then also like I'm allowed to say this because the 
d- regardless of what you think about the videos that you make, I think mm. they're I think they're like really well put together for a comp- oh, for like you. for like a compilation type video. Anytime, anytime. If you need an ego boost, I've I've got you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> no, but like um like I can say that coming from this perspective. If you're a person who makes those kinds of videos and you come into Twitch, you're like I'm here to have a good time, but it would make sense that the YouTube would be your pride and joy because it's like do you see how much time I put into these things? Do you yeah. see how consistently I'm putting this stuff out? And with Twitch, it's and like it's like I'm it, it's kind of here to be passively entertaining to people that you exactly. of course enjoy, but it's also on like a different it's a different level of it's just a different level. <laughs> yeah, Twitch, I'm just here hanging out, cracking jokes. We'll we might do something specific, but YouTube, it's like I I everything you see, I had to actually go in and edit and whether it's good or not, make it the way it is. And so there's it, it's more thought put into it. Twitch is just we're hanging out. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. the only time that and I I don't let me think because I know for like from from my perspective, the the most amount of effort that I put into the streams that I do outside of like constantly just trying to be like a better pr- entertainer, I guess, is like mm-hmm. taking things that I think are really funny which is usually some kind of clip and then making that look a little bit more put together and putting it on, on a short form social media platform. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll do it. Short so, forms where to, where it's at now. I'm just dipping my toes in. Yeah. I've been seeing some of those and I was like, Oh, I was like, Oh, he's getting into this now. This will be interesting. Interesting <laughs> to see how this works. But then it's also like if a lot of his YouTube shorts, like I'm not browsing YouTube shorts that same way. Mm-hmm. You'll find a way to make it work. <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really just more having anything there. Yeah. Just so it dumps it in the algorithm. Yeah. I think just having anything anywhere usually helps because like if you're a person who exists in multiple platforms putting out things for people, you can usually the more you have that you can at least put like a a monicum of effort into, then you can use it to cross reference into the other things that you do. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, I I highly recommend to all the I, I know a lot of people who just do Twitch. I've, I've been recommending to anyone that does that. I, at, at the very least, just do like a clip highlight on YouTube, just so you have a presence. Uh, pro tip, though, don't do full VODs. <laughs> no <laughs> Those... one's going to YouTube to watch a full VOD that, that's already on Twitch. Yeah. I think it's funny that you mentioned that because literally as you said that a person that I watch went live and, and she like does the same thing pretty relatively frequently with the art streams that she does. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's funny timing. But yeah, there's <laughs> I mean, on one hand, it's really easy to take the whole VOD and just kind of yeah. do away with it. On the other hand, it's like, do I really want to do all that? And then wait for YouTube to take 30 billion hours to render the whole thing and then <laughs> and then zip it out for six people to see it. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, that's the tough part, I think, for a lot of the Twitch streamers is that they're not on the YouTube side, so they don't have the effort or they're not even the effort. They just it's not their thing. So they're not willing to dump what, 10, 20, whatever hours. Yeah, it's like um, there's a streamer that I watch that I've also interviewed on here, and she uh, she does basically only Twitch stuff and she's kind mm-hmm. of kicking ass with it. But when I was talking with her about her potential plans and trying to like make youtube content she was like that shit takes so long i don't like come on man <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it, it absolutely does yeah and so it's like it's 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 also one of those things where it's like if you really want to do that you'll find your own ways to do it efficiently it's still going to take a long time because you're just manually having to kind of do everything for the most part mm-hmm. but it's you'll find your own workflow so that you can get things done efficiently Oh, absolutely. And especially if you have like a team of people and not even like a a super formal team, but like a team of people, then you can also kind of bump up the quality of those. Cause like literally just today, me and my, so a few weeks ago, me and my buddies were streaming Baldur's Gate and I turned those VODs into a highlight reel of basically the first section of the game right before you crash the ship. Mm -hmm. Or I guess right as the ship crashes essentially. And I'm like, all right, now I have a buddy who knows how to do subtitling really well and also has enough free time to do that. You take it and do something with it. <laughs> so he's oh, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if I could just hire just a little, little subtitle gremlin, I'd be putting out a one a day videos. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's different values. Like, you know, the, 
the, the Twitch streamers who are like, I don't want to put in the time to have to try and figure out how to like make YouTube videos like this. Then there mm-hmm. are people who do strictly YouTube who are like, I don't I don't know how to like be the most sociable and entertaining in front of a live audience when all the funny bits are removed. Yeah, which or, by I, the way know. was me and why <laughs> I didn't stream for months. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I think I was, I, I personally, mine was misunderstanding why people wanted Twitch. As, as a YouTube guy, I'm like, well, I, I'm not going to be funny all the time. What's, why bother? <laughs> <laughs> but that's entirely not the point. Yeah, it certainly helps when, yeah, no. when stuff like that happens. But it's also <laughs> like, it's, it's like a being in a Twitch stream with some, with another person who's in content you enjoy. It's like a different experience because you kind of. It's like a toned down version of what's happening right here where I'm just like quipping and saying miscellaneous things. And you're like, yeah, so uh, you're like, I, I can't even think of a good example, but it's just like, you know, engagement right then and there that people kind of can nibble on. They're like, this is this is enjoyable. And sometimes people yeah. listen to it for the background and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So that that was my hang up is I just saw it as unedited YouTube content. And I like, Ooh, I don't know if I can maintain that. but in reality you just hop on play some games talk to some regulars it's pretty chill yeah and ultimately if your biggest goal is to just like give people things that they want somebody who's Mm -hmm. going to be there probably a good majority of the people who are staying there are having a good time so it's like ultimately you've achieved your goal at least yeah Yeah, absolutely just the the hangout aspect of it is big yeah i i i'll hop into giant streams like no one in particular but you know thousand plus people and and at that point there's no interaction (laughs) i don't i for those streams i would just wait for the vod or like the edited content but for like for meeting people in the smite scene twitch has been incredible to just most people in the smite streaming i feel like are are pretty collaborative if not just downright friendly yeah yeah that's that's a cool side too just more of a community aspect than youtube yeah you know it's nice yeah there's shit there was one specific thing that i was just thinking about i can't even think about it oh you know, no, it's like a the the thing that I another thing that I enjoy about going into kind of like smaller Twitch streams is that they're usually like, I, damn, how do I explain this? So there's like there's Twitch streamers that I watch that have a lot of followers, but don't get mm-hmm. like a ton of concurrent viewers relative to their follower count. And I don't know how this happens, but like mm-hmm. I have I, I I've like directly personally talked with with Twitch streamers who have like 55,000 followers on Twitch. And then inexplicably I go into their stream and they have like 40 people. I'm like, what is, what is Twi-? like? I don't, I don't know what's going on here. It's, it's very confusing. I don't get it. Yeah. I guess what would that be like a bigger audience in the past? Just off time. What is, I don't know. I, I feel like number of followers on Twitch doesn't correlate directly <laughs> to viewers. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I, I've seen the same thing you're saying, but I've also seen the inverse where it's like someone will have 30 followers and just consistently have 30 viewers. I assume yeah. those are the same people. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. For some of them, I could probably attribute it to like they gained a very like um okay. This is the, the this is I think the only time that I've name dropped him so far. Even though literally two weeks in a row, I've talked to people who who either do or used to operate in the smite scene but like um do you know the other frost have you i'm sure you've heard of him right yeah 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 so i interviewed him a few weeks ago and he was telling me how he grew a youtube channel of fifty five thousand subs in like three or four months and i imagine he had to have grown his twitch channel in part and parcel kind of the same amount of time Mm -hmm. and then he kind of like disappeared off of twitch for a little bit while he went to go do stuff for uh, you know the company that he works for and and he he came back and his follower you know rate was basically the same but the view count doesn't really reflect that so that i could see yeah but that then, youtube you know. despises breaks yeah <laughs> well i will hold on sorry let me i think i worded that wrongly so 
YouTube retention rate for him doesn't really matter because he doesn't upload videos like that. He kind of does put a lot of his creative efforts into the company that he works for because gotcha. they have their own channel. But like, yeah. I'm referring specifically to the Twitch thing and I'm like, I don't oh, really okay. know. I imagine it's still kind of the same thing though, but it's not, Twitch isn't pushing your stuff. I think it's just people have probably moved on. Maybe I don't. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think too, some of it is with the, the regularity of it where I know like, some people it's like okay well on tuesday thursdays they like hang out in this stream so if that stream were to go away for like a month i they're probably finding another thing happening in that same time you know it's yeah yeah yeah. i I feel like it's not so much that people aren't interested it's that they've fallen out of the routine and are not interested enough to come back and try to get back into it yeah it's really weird i don't really get it but that's yeah, also because, you know, Twitch algorithms are also one of those things that like no one talks about because I don't think anyone knows how it works. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one knows YouTube, but at least you hear people trying. I th- I feel like you're right. I've never heard anyone try to metagame Twitch. Yeah, no, they're, they're just like, <laughs> click the button. Three hours later, click the button again. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's but. a good point. I've, ne- I've really never heard that. I don't. I get ads left and right for like, take this seminar on how to make your YouTube channel grow. I never see those for Twitch. Yeah. My guess is that it's probably just like, I, a part of me thinks that Twitch algorithm doesn't really, cause I think Twitch algorithm is almost strictly based off of who you watch and who, and what people who watch that person also watch. Mm-hmm. But then even then, depending on the size of, of, of streamer that you are, like the majority of new people that you're going to find are they're going to come from other people who you know personally who stream or people you rate into who like you and kind of thing. Or yeah. you're going to or you're going to get a lot of people who like they'll they'll come in, they'll talk and I'll be like, hey, what's going on? How'd you find the stream? How's your day going? And they're like, yeah, so I was searching for this game and I sort of by lowest to highest. I'm like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's I'm very curious. I'm in a weird spot for that. Because being a YouTube guy first, 99.9% of my viewers are, whether they're regulars in YouTube, they almost always come from the YouTube side. Yeah. Or to your point, a lot of them come from, you know, I'll raid a friend, they'll raid me back. Uh, but even then, it's mostly like, oh, you're, I know you from YouTube. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I'm always, I, I've only had one person I can think of say that, Hey, oh, I didn't know you did YouTube. So for it's almost entirely YouTube driven for me. Yeah, I wonder if that's I mean, I don't I don't know anything about the Smite content creation scene, but I feel like that would maybe potentially be a relatively common thing if you're dealing with somebody who does both. Because yeah, like, I have no idea how you'd start from the ground. Like, don't get me wrong, ground up on YouTube is equally nebulous and luck based. But I I couldn't imagine how I would go about starting a channel from zero on Twitch. Yeah, because it's also probably easier to start <clears throat> to start Twitch if you have a YouTube fan base than the other way around. Yeah, like I I I've always really respected people that do that grind from zero to three for affiliate. Um, I I skipped it. My YouTube took off well enough by the time I started Twitch. <laughs> But, like, the amount of energy it takes to be on for, like, five people versus zero people, I, incredible respect for anyone that is able to keep the energy so that when the person does show up, they're not, you know, just talking to no one and leave. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> There's actually yeah, been I, don't, I don't know how you grow on Twitch from zero. It seems <laughs> near impossible. Yeah, I've seen interesting things about like <clears throat> growing on Twitch or whatever. And it's like, don't look at your viewer count because your viewer counts delayed. And so you're going to get cucked by the numbers. True. Um, <clears throat> and then also I think a lot of it is just like, do you have a semi natural ability to be an entertainer or are you operating in a space that doesn't require you to do that? And like, what is the main goal of the game you're streaming and what value are you trying to bring to people do that? Yeah, yeah that's fair. But I just, I don't know how you would get someone in. It's it's so much it's luck, I guess. Yeah, I think it's luck and I think it's also just like um eh, I, I I'm not the best person to comment on this because I'm surrounded by a bunch of people who basically want to do the same things that I want to do. So like mm-hmm. uh, a Discord that I'm in with a bunch of my buddies, like half of us stream 
and you know it's you know it's whatever we're we're, we're trying our best out here yeah. um but because of that and because of the fact that the people who already stream also enjoy watching into twitch streams we kind of help establish a baseline that is at least a little bit higher than somebody who has to strictly start from zero no presence anywhere basically yeah, yeah like a nice little group dynamic supporting each other yeah exactly that's but awesome then, yeah it's it's really nice and shouts out if any of y'all hear this um but <clears throat> it also Go means that shout out <laughs> We've all got our friend groups who try and support us in the best ways that they can. Oh, absolutely. But um, I guess what I'm referring to is kind of just like a mini version of what you're talking about, where, again, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like if I didn't create any content on the Internet. I didn't have any friends who even knew that I streamed. And even maybe mm. the ones that did know didn't really do anything because they don't like the games that I'm playing. They don't like watching Twitch streams or whatever. Yeah, it's like what you just, you know, try your best, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be so uncomfortable just saying a joke and staring and waiting. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, I do that with the viewers I'm at now. You know, However, not, not all of them land, but <laughs> I respect the hell out of anyone that can maintain that and actually grow from there. Because I don't think I would have done that if I hadn't started with the YouTube stuff. Right, yeah. But, you know, I suppose it's also like, um, I'm. I also kind of come at it from the perspective of like, I, one, I have pent up ADHD and a lot of energy. And so mm -hmm. I can just keep the energy up through the entire stream. I might crash a little bit when I'm done, but you know, that said, I can, you know, keep the hype up throughout the whole thing. Um, yeah. But the other thing is, it's like, I, th I think for me, somebody who doesn't even know what I do, somebody like somebody who doesn't know who I am. They don't know any of my friends. They don't even know any of the people that I rate into or that I converse with in their chats. They'll come mm -hmm. in and they'll talk about like how my voice sounds, how like the layout of the stream looks weirdly enough. A lot of people, I think what it is is like I stream at weird hours sometimes. And so I get a lot of European people who are like, are you from America? Cause your English is great. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I went, I took debate for three years. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Perfect English. So, yeah. And so it's kind of like those things. And, you know, once you start developing a little bit of traction, even just a little bit, like you need to, I guess, figure out like what are people commenting on the most that. Yeah. You what are they there for? Yeah. What are they there for? And then also um, just figuring out like how you can just keep like best be who you are like you can ramp up the energy a little bit but like at least try and provide a, a very what's the word like authentic value to the stream mm -hmm. i suppose because then otherwise you're gonna get burnt out real fucking quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'd imagine so yeah like you know you have an artificial level of energy and like i have a friend who did like who eh, i guess to be fair she had to do like a, f a 48 hour affiliate um anniversary or I think it was her one year anniversary. It doesn't matter. And so it's like, imagine having to mm. do all of that for, you know, like 36 hours in a oh. row, not, not really in a row, but like back to back to back with some sleep in between. You have yeah. a, you have an overly ramped up energy value and it's like, you're, you're going to crash after like six. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a weird thing in that you're sitting at a computer and yet you're sort of emotionally exhausted. Yeah. Cause it's not it's, like I hop off stream and I'm out of breath, but I, I hop off stream and I need to go not be around people for a bit. Yeah. You're like, let me go, let me go bask in the sun. Let me go play with my dog. Let me go <laughs> do honestly at that point. It's almost just like, let me do anything but what I was just doing. <laughs> yeah. I, I go on a walk every time I end the stream. I just put on shoes and leave. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't, I don't even really know. I, I would, cause I'd honestly love to hear, like have, have a discussion similar to this, but with people who don't really, who don't have the privilege that we have to be where we're at and just see like, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you do? Like, what do you think makes you who you are? Or like, you know, what has given you the, the, the energy to keep going, even when it feels like you haven't been able to, to achieve anything. But then yeah. a lot of that also gets into like the, the specifics of, of each individual person of like how they deal with, with how, how they deal with those days where it just feels like 
not a single person is tuning into your things and you're kind of just sitting there. You don't mm-hmm. have a whole lot to do and whatnot. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess uh, the way I'd always seen it for the YouTube, maybe it's the same for Twitch, but just see it as I like I'm already kind of touched on it. I never planned on the videos taking off if they did great, but I was making them because I wanted to. I feel like that's got to be the same with Twitch. Yeah, like ultimately if you're you streaming for zero. You're probably doing it just because you really enjoy streaming. And if people show up, fantastic. But I, I guess that mindset's where it would need to start for me. Yeah, <clears throat> it's like um, it's like a weird line you have to teeter where it's like, I'm doing this because I'm enjo- enjoying this. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to do things to increase the likelihood that somebody would come in and talk and maybe follow and then come back next time. But yeah. I'm not like the, I think the part where people would get the most discouraged is when people feel like they aren't moving anywhere because having people in their stream is kind of what gives them the value of streaming. And it's like, you might need to readjust your focus a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not a mindset coach. (laughs) I never claimed to be (laughs) like, yeah, me neither. I'm with you. I made fun of mindset coaches one time because I was talking to a guy who's like, you know, try and actually take applicable action to do things and he's like i know a lot of uh a lot of good mindset coaches and i was like well now i feel like an ass <laughs> oh yeah i'm i'm pretty skeptical on that i gotta say yeah well it's, it sounds like a therapist without a degree yeah it sounds like <laughs> you're not a professional yeah like you want to be a psychiatrist but you don't have the power to prescribe yeah you don't have any legal power to tell somebody this <laughs> yeah but <laughs> No, I think the reason that I say that is because I was listening to an audiobook once about like, I think it's called like unfuck yourself or something. And it's funny. It's from like a Scottish guy. <laughs> and right. uh, literally within the first couple minutes of the, uh, of the audiobook, he's like, now don't let this fool you. This isn't me just telling you if you fix your mindset, you'll be fine. While that is true, I'm not going to tell you those kinds of things because frankly, I'm too Scottish for that. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get into life philosophy. I'm here to talk about content creation and smite for crying out loud. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, an, an, another thing that I'm fascinated about when it comes to content is just somebody makes content. And if it's a game that would be funnier or more entertaining, or just a better viewing experience when playing with friends, if mm. it's very obvious that there's chemistry between those people, I can tell that they are friends. And then I'm trying to figure out, Oh, how did you meet these people? Like anybody who watches the videos that I produce for my, me and my friends, it's like anybody who watches those are like, Oh, who were these people? And so they'll, they might be like, how do you guys know each other? So that's like, you're, I, what the hell I titled them as the Magoo crew. How did you uh, meet them? <laughs> uh, we go by Moist squad. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Uh, that's they, your government name. My bad. <laughs> yeah, please. It's a, it's, it's pretty weird. Um, one of my friends growing up, one of my best friends in high school went to college with one of the boys in the group. And, uh, so I went up to visit my friend met M Biggums or, you know, one of our crew who was at the same college as my friend. And then we just started playing some games online and eventually my friend dipped cause he wasn't into smite. And then I like, I want to play smite still. <laughs> I guess we'll just, I'll just keep playing without my other friend. And I friend, a friend turned into friend, I guess <laughs> you're my friend now. We're having soft tacos yeah. later. Yeah. Well, we we're the remnants. We're the scraps of this. We, <laughs> we, it was like initially a giant grouping of two big friend groups who were all playing smite. So we had like, two weeks of great in houses. Everyone's played smite. And then everyone got bored of smite and left and Moy squad <laughs> were the ones that stayed. <laughs> huh? Okay. That's, I'm just fascinated to see that, that it just, that there's just such a, like a massive group to even get it started. Cause most people it's like, I met this person. They introduced me to this person. Now I'm friends with them. Now this person introduced me, introduced me to three other people who also knows this guy that I first met. Now I'm friends with them. And then one of your other friends who had nothing to do with these guys knows a guy who knows that. And it's, it's like this weird interconnected tree. And with you, it's just like, here's a clump of people. <laughs> these are the ones yeah. that remain. And so legally they have to be my friends. Now <laughs> it worked out. We, uh, I guess they, they went 
to this tiny school in Nebraska where there was literally nothing to do. <laughs> so I, I guess when you're there, what do you do? You make big groups and commit to a video game forever. Yeah, fair enough. That's <laughs> I mean, yeah, what can you do? Visited them once. They have a subway. That's about it. The, based on hold on, based on what I know of your of your thoughts on subway, that's like a negative thing. So they have like they get negative credibility points. Oh the, yeah, well the, that the point is Subway was the only thing in that it, it was literally the town is their tiny college and like uh, and a subway. <laughs> <laughs> and to say that there weren't many people there, so they yeah. they met up pretty quick. <laughs> Nothing else to do, I guess. Yeah, it just kind of happens by accident. In walking, in walking from the campus to the subway, you meet like half the the town's population. You're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it just. Like most friend groups just stumbled into it. I'm far too introverted to like go out of my way looking for them. So. Yeah, fair enough. Especially if you if if it accidentally befalls upon you, you're like, all right, this is where I'm going to stay. And then you don't necessarily have a reason to not like that's a bad thing. Like you're very mm-hmm. you're sociable with your friends and whatever. But well, that's yeah. how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and then this the I, I don't know how much I'm expecting the story to change. So there's there's Moist Squad Magoo Crew. And then where does BMT come into the equation? Like, how did that happen? So that those first off, shout out, love those guys. Um, I, I was a casual fan before where, I, you know, I was subbed on YouTube. Don't get me wrong, but I probably would only watch like one out of every 10. You know, I would just see him whenever I'd see him in the recommended. Yeah. Uh, but whenever I posted on Reddit uh, earlier, my first video, I posted some clips on Reddit kind of disguised it because i know how reddit is about self promo <laughs> so yeah i had to sneak it in i said here's some clips and then i i mentioned nowhere that there was a youtube channel tied to it and then i waited until someone said is there more and then i commented and i think that's why they didn't tear me apart yeah fair enough because <laughs> if you've ever seen anything on the smite subreddit uh, the only comment you'll get is um, if that wasn't a master's SPL lobby, then it's not a good enough. Yeah, then I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a pentakill? Probably bronze players, you know, <laughs> so avoiding them was important. Yeah. Uh, but the video did well enough on Reddit that Leaf Warrior reached out. Uh, Leaf uh, being big into the glitch side, they are patrolling Reddit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, and so they were looking, they had just hit 50K and were doing a 50K sub special and were looking to promote someone in the Smite scene. And they just happened to find me on Reddit and then another channel called Chipper Pat and just asked us both to play and they've been fantastic. Huh, that's kind of cool. I respect that. I respect the hell out of that. Yeah, they... <clears throat> It, their 50k video is the one that they introduced me in and it was beyond generous and yeah we we've, we've been chatting ever since those guys are awesome <laughs> uh, i just think it's funny because my first introduction to that that channel was my friend trying to explain to me how the fuck to pronounce their name i was like okay <laughs> yeah. i was like all right good start and then he was having me look up a specific video where it was just horace t posing around an arena match and i was like all right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Maglini. I, I, it took me probably six months until I could confidently type their, you know, their full name. <laughs> like six months of having to put it in the titles and the descriptions and having to Google it every time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's like, yeah, golly, yeah, it shops out. They, yeah. do, they do good work. Yeah, they, they. Uh, the amount of work they put in to f- everything they do is insane in comparison. I thought you were going to say the amount of work they put into fucking everything up. I was like, yeah, that's, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, that too, <laughs> like whatever they're clip hunting, they, they'll like have done the math. They'll know the situations. They'll all have a role. And meanwhile, like in our group, I can't get a gank to come over to my lane. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're so coordinated and know exactly what they're going for, and I'm impressed. Yeah, I guess I guess to their credit, it's because it's like they they have to <clears throat> like their content thrives on their team actually being coordinated, and your content thrives off your friends <laughs> being respectfully dumb as shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, more or less, they are not easy to wrangle. Uh, 
I would never attempt. After BMT started playing with me and I'd come back like, oh, we got, they do this cool trick. And I'd try to recreate it and they'd be like, but I don't want to be Tara. Like, no, you have to be Tara. <laughs> you have For to be Tara. Tour, you, you can't not be Tara. You have to. He's like, like bro, but I don't want, I you, don't feel like, <laughs> okay, fine. We're not doing the thing, I guess. Fuck. You don't want to be Tara, bro. This is going to be the funniest shit ever. Just listen to me. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't just copy the BMT vids every time now. Damn it. <laughs> yeah so i learned that pretty quick that uh the level of coordination is shocking that uh, bmt is an spl team that doesn't care to do well yeah the spl of breaking your game yeah <laughs> like if they if they put that effort into practicing conquest they'd be spl level yeah <laughs> What's that? Th- what's that thing? I think it's parents are always like, you do good in this position if you just applied yourself. It's like, yeah, if you, you guys are so coordinated, if you just applied yourself to, you could be SPL players. And they're like, but we don't want to. We want to find out how to make Ravana fucking invincible. <laughs> yeah, if you want to piss them off, call that the SPL build. They love that. Oh, I didn't know that. I um, they they it, it's not really a point of they they just got annoyed that everyone on Reddit was complaining about that being the SPL build when they did it first. Yeah, there's man. Hold on, two things about that. One, I, I remember they went live once, and I think they said in their go live notification, if you ask for like us to build beads or agus, you will get timed out. And I went in and <laughs> did it as a joke, and you won't believe what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but there's that. And then the other thing is back when I used to watch Frost's smite streams before he left to do his thing and then came back he, mm-hmm. when he was doing his A to Z support series, everyone on Reddit was bitching saying how he's ruining support. <laughs> 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 I do remember that. Yeah. Cause he put, you know, every single God in the game in support, you'd have like, you know, any, any, any insert God that is not d- technically designed for being a support and he puts them in support and Reddit is just pissing their pants over it. Yeah, I saw. I remember that because I remember him having to say something along the lines. I, I don't remember exactly. It's probably wrong. But he had one part in one of those videos where he he showed how many losses until a win, just so to reiterate. Like, look, I'll push support worked once. It's not good. Yeah, I think he started doing that like halfway through, where he would just show his win loss streak with some of the <laughs> of the characters. He'd be like, "You have no idea how many games I had to do to get this fucking thing." Yeah, yeah, so that that probably calmed right it down a bit. Yeah, unfortunately, he's doing it again, but in reverse. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, you know, it's not, I don't, with the state of Reddit right now, I think they're going to be even more pissed. They might. They're, they're a tough bunch. Yeah. They. <laughs> what has been my experience with Reddit? Eh, it's been whatever. <laughs> It's the smite Reddit. If you can, if you can carefully avoid the people just there to in, to make themselves feel better by putting your skill down, if you can avoid them by not coming off as like you're trying to brag, you can you can get some traction on Reddit. But God help you if you try to present any level of skill. That's when they take that as a personal challenge. Yeah, they take that as a personal attack, and it's like you you. <laughs> You only play casual assault. I don't need to hear your opinion. <laughs> Respectfully. <laughs> like the, this video, it's a funny kill. Does it matter how skillful it was? It's it, the point is it's goofy. Yeah. Like uh, in the clips and highlights chat that I have in my discord, this is a, an old ass clip, but it was literally just like a perspective of my friend had died and he's, he's spectating one of our teammates who's fighting a Jing Wei she goes up into her little gust thing, gets launched into the air, and then from, you know, fucking downtown just comes my Neath alt into her sternum and kills her. <laughs> it was like, ah, that's funny. I post it on Reddit and everyone's like, play SPL then. I'm like, no, I play the game once every like week. <laughs> oh, you got to kill with Neath old? Wow. That must have been hard. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned that the hard way. If you, if you even try to present it as you did something good, they'll tear you apart. Yeah. Thank God I don't exist on Reddit. If you come in with some uh, some self burns, you can maybe sneak through and get some good traction. Yeah, you're basically just deprecating yourself before they can do it to you. (laughs) Yeah, but you need that. Imagine imagine an unfiltered smite subreddit. My God, I don't want to imagine that. (laughs) We need we need the gremlins that downvote everything. (laughs) Yeah. Oh golly. 
Um, <laughs> all right. So the the way that I structure these, I'm realizing it's already been an hour, but the way that I structured out these questions is like two relating to the, the way that you do things in your history, two relating to Smite specifically, and then two back to yada, yada, whatever. So right. um, I just, who's your favorite God to play in Smite just in general? Uh, I get bored very easily. Uh, I also have ADHD, so <laughs> I typically can't play the same God two or three games in a row without being bored. If I had to pick, though, it probably Thor or Willix. I just I love both of them so much. That's a respectable opinion. <laughs> any any God that presses buttons. Yeah. I. Do you mean all of them? <laughs> You know, most of them, not Afro. Yeah, if, only yeah, presses enough. like two buttons in a game. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Take that, <laughs> Afro mains. There's gonna, they're going to downvote this podcast just because of that. <clears throat> uh, none of them know how to work. Dude, it were good. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. I love it. <laughs> I normally that's my Loki main insult, you know. I, I just cleverly adapted it to yeah. an Afro main. Yeah, I think it was one time one of your I don't even I don't know who specifically one of your friends was being a just a mild pain in the ass, and you're like, all right, you have to you have to go into the lane with a Loki now. He's like, I don't want, and you're like, too bad, too bad, be gone, <laughs> out of my sight. Yeah, <clears throat> but and then kind of I don't I mean well actually I, who. Yeah. This isn't a question I technically had written down. Who's your least favorite god to play in the game? Afro. Afro, okay. I didn't well, know if you were just bullying her because she deserves No, I it. got... There's five gods that are uh, just horribly lame, and she's the worst. <laughs> I remember when I first started consuming your content back when I was consistently playing Smite, and you were, like, playing Arena and you, or something, and, and you would just make fun of Nox mains, and I was like, I have... <laughs> I was like, I was like, I have diamond knocks. Now I feel offended. And I was like, maybe that's what I deserve. Like, well, I, as I, I also have diamond knocks. Well, yeah, but that's I, also because you gods. probably, you have like an obscene amount of time in the game. I do have most of the gods diamond. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so if you like any of those gods, you're free to do so. I, I will respect it, but I will boo whenever it comes up. Yeah. Freedom of speech, but I also have the freedom yeah. to boo you. Yeah, I'm not saying don't play Afro. I'm just gonna judge you for it. <laughs> but you know, it's your right. Go for it. <laughs> I don't like that you play Afro, but I will defend your right to play her. Exactly. Just be. You have to accept that I'm gonna be roasting you the whole game. Oh, I love Even it. if I you're love doing it. phenomenal and I'm throwing, <laughs> yeah. you're the problem now. You're like this Afro has every single kill on our team. Everyone, she's playing Afro, point and laugh at her. Yeah, it's fucking Afro, throwing the game, 11 or no, didn't save me from any of my 30 deaths. <laughs> yeah, yeah this Afro is the Afro's games. fault. She DM'd me before the game and said, yo, go zero and 30, I got this. Yeah, absolutely. Always, <laughs> always blame the Afro. My oh, golly, yes. Um, okay, uh, so I started playing the game in season seven, and I want to say this was like right after Mulan got released. The timeline's okay. a little janky, but between that time, so like the middle of season seven and now, who has been your favorite God release that has come out? Favorite God release? Um, probably Cleo. I, I'm an assassin man. I love my assassins. She's, uh, well, actually, now Gilgamesh would have been between then and now. So Gilgamesh. Yeah, that's what I was assuming you were going to say. Gilgamesh is a hell of a lot of fun. He's on her, but a warrior. Yeah. That's yeah. That was, that was exactly what I was expecting. I don't know. There's some synapses in my brain that fired where like, this is the correct answer. I don't know how I got there. I didn't show yeah. my work. I don't yeah, even have I, the I knew I was missing something. Cause I, I was thinking it's probably not one of the guard. Maui's pretty hype, but I'm not a guardian man. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I got to go kick man himself. Kick man. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, that's fair. Let me think. Who who has? I feel like I I stopped caring about God releases after, right after season like middle of season nine probably because they when did what did they do? What season are we in? We're in ten. We're in ten. Okay, we're in ten. <laughs> wow, look at that time sure flies when you're um, not playing your game. I guess. <clears throat> yeah, it'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think. 
I'd probably have to go with Cleo personally. And I Cleo's say that a lot also, of fun. Yeah. And I also say that just because like, she's one of the only God releases that has ever come out that me and my friends would like fight each other to try and pick her. Oh yeah. We had, I, we, we had to like establish law and order where we were like, all right, gentlemen's code. If you get jungle, you can play her. And then my friend got solo and played her and was like, you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, having a code was foolish to begin. That's just asking someone to break it. You just got to abandon the team and rush to pick it first. Yeah. And God you get I to decide and... who gets to play it. Yeah. God forbid I try and be a team player in this, in this <laughs> almost team oriented game. When we were all on Xbox still, my Xbox loaded the quickest. So I always got the new God. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was like, I, I, I was the only person who was playing Smite on PC when all my friends were playing on an Xbox. <laughs> so I'd be like, ah, fuck you. I get them. Yep. Yep. It's mine because of privilege. <laughs> it's mine because I regularly dust out my my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Although if I if I if I try playing that game on Xbox, I mean, my Xbox is literally like 10 years old at this point. That's not true. Because when did the Xbox one come out? I just flubbed 2013. The what? 10 years. Yep. Okay, so I probably have had it for about 10 years, and it's like, a, yeah. yeah, God forbid if I try and play that game, I'll be lucky if I even load in. <laughs> I'll be like, guys, I finally got to the God Select screen, and like, the game's over. I'm like, fuck! It is on the, if it's on the Switch, you'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> if the Switch can run it, I think a 10-year-old Xbox 360 would be okay. Yeah, you're right. It's like a... If my phone can run Fortnite... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but i <laughs> golly absolutely i play fortnite on my phone a little bit it was not a great experience but hey i can say that i did it hey there you go i, I, I cannot i've never played fortnite on my phone you're Tried your pubg <laughs> mobile once not uh, not for me <laughs> you're a better man for that yeah <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> not nothing against Fortnite, more just shooters on a phone. Yeah, that I'm an adult. Really. I have a computer. <laughs> like I'm an adult. I have a 401k. I yeah. have I have like two jobs basically. What what the hell do I look like playing on playing games on my phone? Playing computer games on my phone. If I was still a broke 14 year old. I'd absolutely do it. I I played the beta for a Tetris game like all of one summer. Because I was, I didn't have my, I'm not buying Tetris on my phone, but it comes with a free beta that goes for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when I was younger, it was like, I didn't. So there's, I, I had to diagram out a bunch of games that I played <clears throat> from, from the first point I could remember playing games until about when I was playing games on the Wii. And mm. I realized when going through that list, how many games I had to like deal with miscellaneous things of like not being able to play a specific game. Cause I like, I had the Nintendo Wii and <clears throat> around that time I had played Simpsons hit and run for the first time. And then I realized the Simpsons, Simpsons hit and run wasn't on the Wii and I got very sad. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then there was like uh, DS games that I wanted to play, but for some God awful reason, I couldn't find my DS. And so I would get an emulator on my phone that would only work for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is my life now. Hey, you do what you got to do when you don't have the cash. Yeah, exactly. And and now it's like I don't own a Sega Genesis, and so I'm going to run a Sega Genesis emulator on my computer to play fucking <laughs> <laughs> Sylvester Stallone cliffhanger. Ooh, <laughs> any Sly Stallone game is going to be a classic. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just can't stop laughing because when I would show my friends the old games that I played – uh, I'd be like, yeah, I played Sonic. I played Mario. I played Pac-Man, but it's not the regular Pac-Man. It was a point and click Pac-Man game where Pac-Man also had bipolar disorder. And they'd be like, yeah, I don't I'm, remember I, that. It was called Pac-Man to a new adventure. You'd have to like go and <laughs> you'd have to go and solve things for your family and, and uh, bully News neighbors. to me that he had, I knew he had a wife. <laughs> he has three kids. Damn. In this game. When did they find the time? I mean, how old is Pac-Man? <laughs> he's got tons of time. <laughs> but like... He's, he's busy. He's in Smash Bros now. Yeah, that's true. He can't possibly be having... The, well, I mean, this game came out in, what, 96, I think? <laughs> but no, I'd tell my friends that, and, and then I'd show them gameplay of it, and they'd be like, what the fuck is this? What is going on here? And like, the 
the premise of the game, I don't know. It's it's a bunch of baloney. But then I was like, you think that's bad? Let me introduce you to <laughs> Sylvester Stallone and Cliffhanger for the Sega Genesis. And they're like, what? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Genesis. A- anything before, like, the GameCube era, the odds are good it's going to be just nonsensical garbage unless it's a Mario game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> Uh, there was an Animaniacs game for the Sega Genesis, and that was that was my game. Ooh, but, I never had the Genesis. I was a Nintendo kid. That's you know that's respectable. Yeah. I, don't, I ain't got any beef. I I grew up playing <laughs> Super Mario Brothers three at my dad's bandmates' house. Hell yeah! <laughs> but um, that's a bit of a diversion. Uh, let me get back. <laughs> let me get back on track here. I told you this was gonna happen. You should have prepared for this. Um, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. This is actually most of the time I don't come on here asking people for advice because then it sounds like I'm trying to mooch off of people. That's fair. But I, I'm willing to give it. <laughs> but I saw on Twitter once, and I think I even replied to the same thread that you would reply to, where this person was like, How the hell do I edit a VOD down into a video in a time efficient manner? And I told them, just make 10 minutes out of the VOD, and then you can multi purpose your VOD so you don't have to sift through two hours. You have to sift through whatever takes you to get to 10 minutes of content. And you mm-hmm. said something about how there's a thing that you have. Do you, yeah, you just, flashback recording. Yeah, what the hell is that? Uh, so you can do it through OBS, or if you have a I NVIDIA know. card, I just use NVIDIA's built in shadow play. Uh, And so you could set it up to just mine is set for a minute. I used to do two minutes and spent too much time sorting through nonsense. (laughs) You can set it up to just be essentially it's running a loop of the past minute permanently as you go. And whenever you hit a button, it just saves that past minute. Oh, like I, I do that whenever I'm recording off stream, I'll just record the full game. So I have everything just in case. Yeah, but when I'm streaming, because it's a lot more resource intensive to record full gameplay, you know, at the full resolution, whatever, while also streaming it, flashback recording is a good middle ground. Yeah, fair enough, because I I saw that and I was like, okay, that would make the most sense. That's what he'd be doing. It's just, you know, the PC's version of Xbox record that kind of except probably a lot better, Yeah, Um, except you can separate the audio tracks. Yeah, which that's huge. I think that's even something (laughs) I might have asked you about once as well, which is funny that these are all coming up now. Yeah, um, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up NVIDIA right now to see if I can find that or just figure out how to do that in OBS. But uh, uh, if you have a NVIDIA graphics card, you might already have it. Hit Alt-Z if an overlay comes up. Yeah, let me see. Um, I can't say for certain because it's trying to make me get an authenticator app for my NVIDIA right now. Hold on, let me do that. Move <laughs> this over. No, sir. I don't believe it is on yeah. here. <laughs> well, there's options. Uh, just look at. I just Google a quick guide for OBS or flashback recording, but it's the same thing. Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to keep that up. But yeah, I was wondering because I would always see clips that I'm like, these are definitely longer than what a normal flashback, like, you know, whatever I would have assumed that would have been. I was like, these seem way longer than how long that clip would normally go. But that's because you're like, I have the full game, which also explains how you're able to chop it up in the way that you do. <laughs> Yeah, I, the full game's better for my group because it, it's you never know whenever the one off sentence is the start of a bit. And if you're just doing flashback recording, then you're missing you some know, of that I, context. Yeah, like I, I, I don't think I'd bother catching one. And then it, when, if it turns out to be like a recurring bit that builds on it and necessitates that first clip, then with only flashback recording, I couldn't use any of that. Yeah, you're like, well, I guess I'm just screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I, that's why i only do it when i'm streaming otherwise as much as it does suck to sort through i'd prefer the full game yeah and i guess that ultimately makes sense because in the way that i brought in this question it's like this is referring to vods specifically mm-hmm. i imagine it's because especially like if you because i i tried doing that for a little bit and then promptly realized like i don't even what am i going to do with this footage i don't make smite content i wasn't even like in the realm of trying to actually work on making videos yet because i hadn't built all that out Mm -hmm. but i did all of this and i'd like label it with the god name and the and the match type and whatever um and then i had like 90 gigs of stuff just sitting in my hard drive and i was like i'm not doing anything with any of this (laughs) be gone (laughs) you can't know you can't know i i have the same thing where i just have an ongoing recording file. If there's any, if ever something good enough happens, 
I will have those to pad out a video, I guess. Yeah. If not, they'll just sit in the storage forever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I have probably a terabyte of random footage that I haven't used that I'll never use, but I'm hoarding it for no reason. Because who knows? Maybe I will. Who knows? Maybe I'll go back through and sort those really low quality early recordings that I'm absolutely never going to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I just keep buying storage. Got to keep them. Yeah. I, I could never afford to do that because I came to this revelation when I was trying to. So I have a buddy who was streaming Valorant the other day and I was like, I kind of want to join you guys. So I went to install it and they were like, you don't have enough space on your C drive. And I was like, now, why would that be the case? And checked, and I had 20 <laughs> megabytes of, of storage. Ooh. I was like, what the hell happened here? So I was trying to like move stuff over to my drive that I have 1.5 terabytes of free space, moving stuff over to like the 400 extra gigs of space I have on my <laughs> removable hard drive and then deleted my recycling bin, cleared out stuff <laughs> that was more than 60 days old and for literally freed up 500 gigs of space. I was like, holy I was shit. Like, I'm like, I, what the hell have I been doing? <laughs> and now that I think about it, given that I've been literally like, you know, streaming saving those vods taking vods and recordings from my friends and so i can compile those into videos doing the same thing for my own videos you know 10 gigabytes of footage adds up really quickly when you're doing it like two times a week yeah and there's three of you <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it, it, it eats through storage yeah but i i didn't even think about that and then like i i go to this one project that i'm working on it's like a 45 minute project and i go into my downloads folder or no where the hell is it Uh oh i lost it i have like a folder that basically just has every single recording that i had to do uh and they're literally all like minute recordings and i have 54 of these recordings in my drive and they only make up one and a half gigs (laughs) i'm like all right yeah that's that's gonna be a hell of a mess to sort through yeah but luckily i did i did each recording as i implemented it into the project and okay I na- and i named all of them that's, but like, okay that's yeah. the important part yeah so it's I was, not just a series of dates <laughs> yeah that would kill me um <laughs> but yeah so like if i li- if i go into the project i go to show my friends and it's like 54 video recordings 54 audio recordings of the music of each of the games that I'm talking about 54 Mm. images of the thumbnail. And so I go into my premiere pro timeline and it's just, you know, (laughs) a fucking scripture. Oh yeah. Uh, And so, but all that's to be said, this flashback recording thing might be very helpful for me in the future. It's super helpful. The, the only caveat though, is you have to kind of, you have to be able to be able to, recognize that something's worth saving save it and keep going you know it could if you're not careful it can be real awkward yeah like, all right just <laughs> hit, the, hit the button everyone's just laughing at the bit let's save it oh wait the bit's still going and i oh shit where am i <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah i mean who knows this might not actually change the way that i do anything because i'm realizing the utility at which you have to use that and most of the time if i want to Something that I would use flashback for that would be in a stream context. I'm just like, someone clip it. And if they don't, I'm like, I'll clip it myself. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. But that, then, that's how I treat it. It's just if something happens on stream that might be worth clipping, I just save it Yeah, there for me to come back to. It's also really nice for games where I don't want to record. But if something funny happens, I'd want to snag it. Yeah, because I've definitely noticed that there have been times where I'm like, like I... I know your secrets. No, I don't. I don't know your secrets. I just know that like, it's like pretty obvious to tell most of the time that like you, you find all the funny moments that occurred in one specific match. And then you have a cut that indicates when the next match is started. Not like anybody, you know, wouldn't notice Mm. that the game is different, but then there'll be like one clip that doesn't match up with any of the other ones. And I'm like, Oh, so now I know that's probably where that came from. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. If it's just a one off, no context odds are it's from a stream. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> which that was actually this was this brings up something that i was actually curious about earlier but wanted to save it until i got to this specific portion but it's like i assume the flashback recording also it looks like it removes a lot of the overlay stuff because uh, you Nvidia can set just it read that uh you can set it same as on obs how you can set vod tracks differently from live tracks uh oh. same deal so i like i don't 
I don't have any of my overlays set to the flashback recording. Uh, I don't have like the music if I have music going set to that so that it, you know, no DMCA strike or <laughs> random middle of a song popping up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's, it's pretty convenient in that sense. You can you can specify what goes where. Yeah, that's smart. <clears throat> and I imagine if you're doing it from the perspective of the the NVIDIA thing, it's also like it's not even reading that data anyways because it's yep. not pulling directly from OBS. Yeah, exactly. Plus, so. uh, it, it doesn't matter. You can leave the overlay for me. I didn't want people to really like if you pay attention, you can tell. But I didn't want people to be like, oh, all, is this why is there a goose on screen with <laughs> pop donator and, you know, whatever? <laughs> yeah. It'd be very jarring for a YouTube audience to see a Twitch page all of a sudden. Yeah, because there's a I feel like maybe this is a meme I don't understand. Is there like a war that goes on between Twitch and YouTube people like people who exclusively view content from a content creator who streams on both from one platform and they just hate each other? Not that I know of. I they're one and the same for them. I well, yeah, I guess guess I've always seen it as most people must do both because I do both. But I guess a lot of people are strictly Twitch. I don't know if there's that many that are strictly YouTube. I feel like most YouTubers, it's pretty low hanging fruit to get that stream money, you know? Yeah, especially if you (laughs) as opposed to if you're if you're already a YouTuber, a gaming YouTuber, streaming is very easy you've already got most of the equipment if not all you already have an audience etc yeah whereas if you're a twitch streamer going to youtube you have to learn how to edit you have to learn youtube algorithm you know there's it's a lot tougher of an investment if you start with one and then go into it yeah so i don't don't think there's a war i I, (laughs) i've never seen anything all i've seen is like maybe people on twitch wishing they had the time to do it more so Maybe, yeah. I guess I was mainly referring to viewers, and I, I do realize that oh. it, is, it is mostly a joke at the end of the day, because it's like, <laughs> yeah, because there's one YouTube, there's one content creator that I watch, and every time, like, every time the, the creator makes it obvious that the footage is going somewhere or is being recorded from somewhere that is not where they're at, a couple mm-hmm. of people fire off in, like, it's 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 ultimately a joke, which yeah. is why, but, you know, either way. But, no, yeah. the most I've seen, uh, my chat will say, hi, YouTube, on a clip knowing full well that the chat isn't going to go in the video <laughs> or knowing full well that it's going to go into that drive that <laughs> may never be used. God. Yeah. I love the high YouTube meme. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Oh, so dumb. I think I've only but ever no, had, I, it, I think I've only ever had that successfully work one time, which is that I, there was a content creator that I accidentally unfollowed while he was streaming. And then ooh. I followed like 30 seconds after he started doing the recording for his video and so you can just see my name just blaring at the fucking front of his <laughs> of his thing <laughs> you gotta sneak up on him getting the video yeah they'll never expect it um so yeah that's what that is but and then uh this okay so <clears throat> this this second question was kind of off the the bat of what i had just asked about the flashback thing gotcha. which is like Obviously, subtitling and miscellaneous sound effects and things are going to take the most amount of time when you're actually making a video, especially if you happen to have a substantial amount of clips via the method that you use or that you were you use for streaming and whatnot, which is like, here's the funny bit. Take the funny bit instead of here's a, you know, 30 minute recording that I have to sift through and find all the funny bits. But I still feel like Mm -hmm. you just you just you just do it so fast and so efficiently. And I don't I don't get it. Like I feel like it takes me two hours probably to compile down a bunch of footage, which for me doesn't feel like very long. And then I go to subtitling Mm. and I'm like, this is taking me six hours, (laughs) not actually six hours. Like, you know, yeah, no, it it takes forever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just been doing it for a bit and there's some parts of it. You can cut down, save time on some parts. You just get in the groove of, I guess. Um, I, I typically do it as I go just because it's easier so it doesn't feel as much as like one big segment. Mm, yeah. Where I typically do, I'll, I'll do a rough cut pass, then a text pass, then a Zoom slash whatever, you know, Photoshop nonsense. <laughs> and then the last thing I do is music and sound effects. So I normally do each of those, like I'll, I'll cut all the bits from one game and then I'll do 
that all of those clips through each of the session or segments. And just personally, I, I don't think that's more efficient, but it tricks me into not feeling like I've been doing, um, you know, text for eight hours. Yeah. And I suppose ultimately if it doesn't feel like you're taking forever to do it, then you are probably more willing to also stay there and continue doing more stuff. So yeah. the efficiency is more in, I was able to get eight minutes of footage fully ready as opposed to five in one day. Yep, ex- exactly. And it, it's, it helps to whenever, I don't know if you've, you've had this moment or not, but whenever you're in the timeline, you feel like you've done so much and then you zoom out and you've done 30 seconds of edit, you know, 30 seconds of footage, but it's been four hours of editing and that is crushing. <laughs> so yeah, it also helps uh, not have to deal with that. Yeah. Cause at that point it's like, you know, like this, like, cause at that point you break it into segments, not necessarily time per se. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I remember back when this, this was back when I was putting more effort into making the videos that I make where mm-hmm. I, where for some reason I used it as like a bragging point. It wasn't really a bragging point, but it was like a point of conversation with my friends where I just would be gone for two or three hours and I'd come back and I'd be like, guys, it's been three hours and I have three minutes of footage. And they're like, what the fuck have you been doing? I'm like, I don't <laughs> know, man. <laughs> hey, a, an hour for a minute of footage is good. That's, that's solid. Yeah, well, I mean, it takes an hour of my time, not necessarily an hour of, I mean, well. Yeah. But, yeah, either way. And then, like. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I'm sure if I were to do it with no distractions, I could do it faster. But, I, you know, I count the 20 minutes where I drift off and watch a YouTube video in the side as part of the editing process. Yeah, you're like, I can. <laughs> you're like, I can, I can watch this thing as a small treat. Yeah, standing <laughs> desk is the editor's best friend. Oh, I can I can wander off <laughs> at a moment's notice. Yeah, you never know where he'll be. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's that's fair. But now what that means is like at least like for me, that means that like since I've gone through these trials and tribulations of uh, sucking ass at being efficient with editing, I guess now mm. that I like know what I'm doing in a fairly efficient way. I have friends who are like, I want to make videos. And I'm like, come talk to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It really is just a series of how do I do this? I found out how to do this. Is there a better way to do this? If yes, I guess I'll Google that. Yeah. If no, this sucks. (laughs) (laughs) That is the nicest part about any of the Twitch and YouTube being such a common hobby job, whatever you want to call it. I have not found anything that I couldn't figure out either through brute force or (laughs) there are a billion youtube channels dedicated to every aspect of like obs or adobe premiere yeah that's great that's the nicest part yeah i used to think the same thing where i was like well i still do kind of think the same thing where it's like i know that if i like i operate in spheres that a lot of people operate in so i can find what i'm looking for i think my problem is that i break shit so horribly that sometimes the internet just can't help me. Yeah, that's fair. I, I guess for me, more less so than like tech issues, because yeah, that yeah, yeah. that's different. And if it's a tech issue, you just find a forum where everyone is either saying that that's weird, I don't have that issue, or <laughs> they're saying here's how you fix it, and it's not at all the point. Anyway, uh, yeah. not the tech side. I agree with you there. It sucks. Uh, yeah. But just in sense of like, I'm making a video. I Ooh, it'd be cool if I did like some sort of zoom in with, uh, you know, the bomb sound effect. Yeah. And so then I, you know, figure out how do you zoom? <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that's that's where the YouTube side comes in. There are so many yeah. people who, I guess. Fell into the technical side rather than actually doing the streaming. Right. Yeah. And. I I do fully agree that the internet is my best friend. Uh, The the internet is my worst enemy if I'm having tech issues, but the internet is my best friend if I'm trying to figure out a technique for how to do something cool. Yeah. (laughs) Cause like I've, I've literally gone through three different editing softwares 
over the last four years that I've been trying to, to make videos. And so every single time I'm like, God damn it, this isn't how I used to do things. And so when I switched over to Premiere Pro, there were so many things in Filmora, which I used to use that I, I just took for granted. I was like, I can do this thing, like cropping yeah. an image. Yeah, I, I found the same. I went from Sony Vegas to Premiere. <laughs> and it, it is a giant step back at first being like, okay, zoom in. <laughs> step one that i learned a year and a half ago how do i do that here yeah and so that was literally it was like i i want to crop this image because i want to have somebody's health bar displayed to be bigger for dramatic effect mm -hmm. how do i crop down the video to make that happen and i googled it and they were like you have to apply a crop effect i'm like god damn it yep welcome to masking <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in that in that sense it was like god this is such a pain in the ass to do but <laughs> Now, you know, now the fact that I managed to compile all of my videos on my laptop at work, I'm like editing on a laptop is easier because I can use a trackpad if I want to zoom in on something more clear, like easier because I can just, you know, do the thing instead of having to like drag it from the corner or zoom yeah. in with the slider. I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, that that one felt really nice when I was there and I thought, oh, this is lame. Adobe doesn't do that. I I think I now get why they don't do that. <laughs> and why it's better that it's not. Yeah. But <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, I think, I think the, this, this whole conversation is basically surrounding the fact that what I do and what you do are relatively similar. You're just a lot better. at it. <laughs> I don't think I'm better. Just luck. Well, no, I, I'm not talking about like in terms of like the following that you have. I just mean like th the actual, just like how things look and how things are arranged and how things are done. I'm just like, I'm like, you do this better, but it makes sense. Cause you like, you know, you've been doing oh. it for longer and you, you operate in that and you're like, this is what I focus on doing. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. I don't know. I guess just trial and error. Yeah. Ultimately that yeah. is the biggest situation. I also think it's, I, you know, this is getting into a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that nobody really cares about. But ultimately I think another part of the problem is that I can't devote all that time to doing that because I have to devote smaller chunks of my time to like the 50 million other things that I do. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, tough. You really do need like three uninterrupted hours at a time. Yeah. And the most amount of time that I get to do that is at work, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's still, it's still interrupted, but just not as much as me getting distracted by seeing some video on the internet while I was trying to actually find a proper video to help me do my thing. <laughs> it's so like, damn it. <clears throat> yep. If only, if only it was less time consuming. Yeah, but that's what makes it worth it when the end product comes out really good. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, I don't know. I, I enjoy the minutia of the editing too. I don't know why. Yeah, I think there is something fun about getting really like in deep and technical about things. Um, and so it's yeah, never you some, know yeah it it's never one of those like things I'm a like, a cool cool expert. I because I call it scale now instead of zoom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm an expert yeah you're like i am the best <clears throat> do not ask me to make youtube videos i, I do not ask me to make youtube videos on doing this because i won't <laughs> yeah no one's asked me to make them a video yet yeah that's a good point yeah i've had i've had i've also not had a single person ask me to make a video yet i brute forced my way into doing it because i felt like it oh there you go <laughs> um there was literally there was like there's a streamer that i was watching and they were doing like a community night and they were playing like um overwatch they were playing i think well i think overwatch is actually the main segment that i that i edited um mm -hmm. and and for no reason at all i was like let me take the vod and i'm just gonna go run with it and just make a video and i made the video and i gave it to them and i was like hey i don't expect you to do anything with this i just wanted to do it because i thought it was fun and they're like oh that's cool thank you i appreciate that um, and I was like, I was like, that said, since you really seem to like it, if you want to upload it, you're free to. And then they were like, oh, no, no, I want I want you to upload this on your channel because it shows the work that you've done. And I was like, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. But also it's not going to have the same outreach because I get I. I just, you know, they have three and a half thousand you know, followers on Twitch and and all this other stuff and whatever. And so I just let them do their thing thinking that they were going to take that offer. And then when I realized that I was going to have to edit other people's uh, VODs because they actually asked me to, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to put this on my other channel where I can just showcase the work that I'm doing for other people. And so I reached out to yeah. them and I was like, Hey, um, do you have that footage, that video? And they were like, uh, no. <laughs> 
And then I looked through all of my drives, all of my project files. And I was like, I also can't find it. And so I literally oh, spent like no. six hours of time for technically not technically nothing. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so, yeah, not great. Ooh. But that See, but that's one of those things. I'm not going to make that same mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, next time I make something, I'm finding a place to keep this. Yeah, I it just throw it up on YouTube as unlisted at the very least. Yeah, that's really what I should have done. And from this <laughs> point, like I have a friend who who I actively edit VODs for because I'm just more efficient than them. With all mm-hmm. due respect, they they might not hear this. Ah, um, uh, they but, suck. Yeah. <laughs> they're trash. <laughs> they're a good entertain. They're a good. They're a good uh, Twitch live streamer. They just don't. I mean, like literally, they <laughs> when they did that sub anniversary or that what the hell that year anniversary twitch stream 48 hours thing they hit the sub goal and ate like half of a pocky chip mm-hmm. you know the one chip challenge thing and oh, i yeah, just I've done that one. Oh, how did that go for you it wasn't bad um it wasn't that spicy but um, <laughs> i got a little sick from drinking milk after because i just kept drinking milk because it wasn't <laughs> bad spice but it lingered yeah you're just but like... then i drank too much milk it started to feel a little queasy from that <laughs> But the chip itself wasn't bad. Interesting. Damn. Okay. When I was, when I was editing down just the part of them eating the Pocky chip, like it, they, they exclaimed the word, Oh, like 65 times in a, (laughs) in like a five minute span, Mm -hmm. ran out of milk and had to go for a milk run midstream. And like, and in, in the, I, there's no other way for me to, to say this, but like when I was, I was editing on my earbuds and I could hear the saliva coming out of their mouth and I was like, God damn it. I don't want to hear this. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) it'll do that. It'll do it to you. Yeah. And so I, I'm not, I, you know, that was where that was. (laughs) I don't even, you know. And like, I was at work when this was happening. And so I had, I had like, I was at work when they were doing the challenge and so mm-hmm. you can just hear me talking through my fucking like <laughs> shitty earbud mic as they're like panicking. <laughs> so they're like, oh God, why is it spicy? <laughs> why is this spicy chip spicy? <laughs> Who did this? And so, yeah, but no, that's. I I guess it's just a skill diff. I just got to get better. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Maybe it was worse than I thought. I did it as. I, don't, I think it was part of a 12 hour. Th- I don't know. It it was in the middle of a long stream. It It's not fun. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's not designed to be fun. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not it's not as bad as I thought though. Yeah, fair enough. It was it was <laughs> after I I want to say, let me think cuz yeah, their stream had been going on for like 24 hours by that point and then they had the chip and then literally by the end of that streaming day to move on to the next one, they were like that they were like that chip took something out of me, bro. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but as long I, as they made it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're alive as far as I can tell. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much of it they have left. But or <laughs> They were like, guys, I'm a champion. I did it. And then someone in chat was like, all right, now do a full one. And they're like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a half of what just seems like it, it's all of the pay. I can't imagine a full chip is much worse than half. Yeah. Ultimately, it, yeah. It's, it just, like, I imagine any segment of that chip is going to taste equally hot to the rest of that chip. Yeah. I think the concern was that it was going to just, I don't know, like build up more. Because you just, I don't, I don't really understand, but yeah, maybe I, I, I'm, I'm skeptical on the lot. I don't, I don't think they did themselves any favors. Yeah, no, I think they were just very afraid. I mean, they, they <laughs> went through like a three minute, like not actually anxiety attack. Cause that would imply some actual danger, but they were just like, I don't, they were like, mm-hmm. why did I do this? This is awful. This is stupid, but it's awful. Yeah. They were like, they were it's like this fucking awful. They were like, this chip is supposed to be blue. This shit is black. Yeah, it's black. It tastes like garbage. Yeah, <laughs> it's awful. And my biggest concern is depending on the how they applied the spice is if it was on like the powder that mm-hmm. that shit would kill me. Oh, it's definitely in the powder. Yeah, that would like kill me. I'd be like one gra- one flake of the spice mixture goes down my my airway <laughs> and I am down for the count, brother. <laughs> like <clears throat> God, but what, what a what a scam of a company. 
<laughs> Throw some over the counter spice powder on a chip. Sell it for thirty five bucks. Yeah, they're just they're just selling pain. Yeah. <laughs> but no, all that all that's to be said is uh, I have I have a note in here because this isn't this really this isn't a question. But I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, whenever I watch your videos, it feels like smite if it was a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can kind of see it. Just like out goofy, outrageous moments. Yeah, I don't know. I I get that. I appreciate that, honestly, because uh, there's a <laughs> lot of smite content focused around, you know, the best of the best, which is awesome. There's so little content around the nonsense that happens in the game. Yeah. And that's, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't really watch even that many smite content creators. It's like, I watch, I watch frost every once in a while because it is something nice to just have on in the background. Even if I probably watched the stream that he pulled to turn <laughs> into a video. Uh, yeah. So it's like, there's that all occasionally. Like I remember watching a bunch of the, uh, I think it was just like, I don't even know the specific name of it anymore, but it's just like this insert X smite God on crack. Mm -hmm. I think is what it's called, what they're called. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Guy. Some, what is that? Phoebe, I think his videos. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. It's either him or yellow shell. I, yeah, yellow I'm shell is who I'm thinking up. of. Or okay. no, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm what? Oh God. I looked up Achilles on crack and the first thing I found after the Phoebe video was an Achilles repair surgery video. <laughs> oh i'm God. okay i'm okay <laughs> oh no thank you <laughs> okay good it was Phoebe. i was gonna feel bad if i got that wrong yeah i was like what is Cause I, yeah i know which ones you mean yeah but yeah it's like i watch those i watch some of frost stuff occasionally when i'm just like um when i was really into like final k's solo stuff i'd watch that but it's like if mm -hmm. i'm looking for something like purely entertaining with like very little room for like um you know what is typical of smite games which is bad stuff <laughs> uh i'm like i'm yeah. like i know i know who i need to turn to yeah definitely definitely cut out all the the parts where we're just upset and losing and <laughs> like <laughs> right he's ganking again yeah and i think there's there's been exactly one moment that i've ever seen where there was this isn't even, this is nobody's fault. This is just the way that I like to consume content. There was one specific video where I think you guys were like, I don't want to say that you were drunk because that's like misrepresenting potentially, but there was like, you were playing a drunk smite game and you had like just one of the most batshit insane teammates I've ever seen who was like off doing his own thing, going in solo and dying and blaming like the, the somebody on your team. Mm -hmm. It was like bad tank or some shit and i was like just I was, I was like, classic sucks. randies yeah classic smite <laughs> randoms yeah but outside of that it's just like uh it's like thank god i can watch videos where these people exist in an environment where they can because it's like i could tell you guys don't take the game seriously but you're also good enough at the game that you can just like you have your moments of like a hey give me funny penta or something yeah we used to take it seriously enough that we we can fuck around without being completely useless yeah <laughs> it's one of those but things where I, it's like i love angry teammates i've always <laughs> loved angry teammates because there's no better entertainment than poking a bear who doesn't realize that you're poking them yeah it's like a the best the absolute best content is finding someone furious at something not that big a deal. Yeah. And, and just really egging them on. Yeah. And all for nothing. <laughs> like, oh, I other love than content. Well, yeah, it used to be for nothing, but now it's for content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it used to be just so I'd chuckle to myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, there, oh, God, there's one there's one very specific moment that I can think of. Where you had a teammate where anytime something happened, he would just say like one specific command in the chat and then you said something to him and then he started saying a different command and you were like, all right, we got him. And then he went right back to it and you're like, oh, never mind. I guess he just needed some <laughs> variety or some some shit. I genuinely my favorite memories in Smite are getting a message from someone that's angry and then thinking, oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah. 
I used to play Duel a lot, and if you've ever played Duel, if you win Duel, you get reported for cheating and you get DMs. Yeah, it's the t- it's crazy. But oh, there were so so many great, just ab- abject rage sent at me, and I said back, like, you know, how's it going, friend? You know, just just really being a little shit. Yeah, <laughs> but, but also <laughs> saying nothing bad at all just being aggressively positive to that's the best way to do it yeah you it, just if you just it, throw love and affection at them it it for some reason that just gets the best responses yeah or even like there was another time where a random was just like really harassing your one of your not harassing he was just you know being very mad at one of your teammates one of your friends <laughs> And like, as you do yeah and he died and he like was like spamming f6 or whatever and you were like hold on i'm gonna poke the bear so that he attacks me instead of you <laughs> and you were like how can i help you or you were like what was it you were like what happened and he was like f6 and you were like no that's what you want to happen or some shit <laughs> you're like <laughs> god i just have so many of those moments just in the back of my head where it's just like yeah look at him go those are my favorite just taking someone Furious over a game that doesn't matter, and then just just ramping it up to eleven. Yeah, through nothing that is like even a reportable offense, or even could be like misconstrued. You're just like, no, hey, I man. mean, first off, I don't love i I don't want to drop any slurs on anyone ever. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a hold on a hot take. <laughs> hot take. <laughs> But it's especially important when you're poking the bear to be nothing but polite. Yeah. It, it more so than just personal, you know, being not a horrible piece of shit. It's also just it's important for the bit <laughs> that, yeah. that it's one side is abject fury and over the top mad. And the other side is like, oh, you know, what, what are you up to today? <laughs> It's customer service polite. Yeah, it's like, so what do you plan on doing after this game is over? <laughs> Always great. Yeah, I think that I I hope to one day ascend to a level like that, because all I do now is like a, like I'll occasionally talk shit to teammates like verbally in my own little thing because I'm just oh, like, yeah. I'm like, God, this is obnoxious. But I, I whenever somebody goes to over the edge to the point where they're typing in chat, I'm like, Haha, point and laugh at them. Oh, yeah, that's the. <laughs> I used to, but now I like getting in there. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like getting in there and actively stirring, stirring the, the pot. pot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> it's hilarious. I love it. <clears throat> but uh let me let me change gears one more time because I only have two more questions and then I'll I'll let you off the hook to go do something more productive probably. <laughs> <laughs> no rush on my end, but shoot. Yeah. So um I'm just like so I guess this can kind of be like a two parter question, which is like, what are some of your favorite games that you've played that you have content of on the Internet outside of Smite? And then Mm. and then after that, what are just some of your favorite games to play in general that you don't play on stream that you're just like, this is just for my leisure time. I'm going to play this and have fun. Uh, As far as games on the channel that aren't Smite, I've I've fallen off. I I keep wanting to do more like I, I will always have a side project going, but. As soon as I finish the new Smite video, I think I can get working on the next one. (laughs) Yeah. But I I do think my favorite video on the entire channel still is not Smite. It's a Spelunky 2 video. (laughs) Uh, It's it's just my favorite. It's the one that I probably put the most time into just being a not Smite video. I felt like I really had to do it good. Yeah, that makes sense, especially because it's like a beloved game. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually I'm working on another one that I have like 17 minutes edited for, but you have from tw- from March 2022. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, uh, I lost the footage uh, when my PC fucked up and crashed and then I I found it where I had I had I had tried to recover a dead hard drive and apparently it was recovered and it just put it anyway. Long story short, I found the files I thought were lost from like a year ago. Nice. But I think Spelunky and then Dead by Daylight, which was the game I was making videos in whenever my friend was pestering me to make smite videos. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed both. The, the Dead by Daylight videos suck, but the Spelunky video I'm very <laughs> happy with. <laughs> As for games outside of... I play all sorts of games. Uh, I Probably Binding of Isaac is my go-to. I play that game all the time and have for probably a decade or so. Nice. Nice. But yeah, just just into all sorts of game playing Baldur's Gate three right now religiously because everyone is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, but yeah, I like grew up on shooters, big Halo and COD kid. Uh, love RTSs, um, Command and Conquer specifically. Yeah, just all sorts of games, really. Nice. It's a wide variety yeah. of games. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't have a genre. In fact, MOBA is probably my least favorite genre. <laughs> I literally only enjoy Smite from the MOBAs I've tried. Right. Yeah, it's I there's a bunch of technical shit that I've gotten into with other people where it's like, is Smite like Smite is a MOBA. I think it's advertised as one, but it's also like a conglomeration mm-hmm. of mechanics from a bunch of different games that is like, what do you yeah. actually call it? But yeah, at the end of the day, you'd probably have to describe it as a MOBA ultimately. Yeah, I, I, I don't like the top down MOBAs yeah like no. league of legends or dota or whatever yeah <laughs> so yeah that honestly uh moba is probably my least favorite genre despite <laughs> loving smite <laughs> we you know we make some exceptions around here <clears throat> yeah in terms of just straight hit or misses <laughs> it's only had one hit but that one hit is stuck yeah it's like look at where we are now <laughs> yeah fair <laughs> Jesus Christ. Once I put more time into Baldur's Gate, I'd love to to talk with other people about it because literally within my first oh good. I want to say within my first probably 3 hours of playing the game, I I I had some just absolutely insane experiences like me and my friends exploring what looks like a weird abandoned church slash catacombs thing and mm-hmm. my friend is like a brawler equivalent and so he has a lot of strength and so he literally we were like, we can't open this chest or maybe we could open it. I don't really remember, but my friend just picks up the chest and then fucking throws it at me and deals like half of my health. <laughs> I'm like, you're an asshole for this. And then I, oh. I go to play in a different session with, with him and his other friends instead of me and my friends, even though we are friends, I'm playing with him. Yeah, I'm no. playing on a different character. They're in like this abandoned house and there's like this weird gold monster or something that has way too much health and does way too much damage. So you just like confuse it enough to make it kill itself. And there's a Mm -hmm. chest with medium toughness and like 50 health. And we're like, all right, well we can't break this. We can't unlock it. And so my friend goes to the top of like this three story building and then just tosses it off a cliff. That work. Yeah. Yeah. It landed down and it smashed it's into a so million cool. pieces and we got like three, pe- three items out of it. <laughs> like every time I think I, I've found myself multiple times saying I'm going to do Oh, you can't do that. It's a video game. And then you, you, it keeps surprising me in that I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I, the, the go, I'm trying to think of the last one that did that. Um, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but I've been, actively surprised multiple times where i not even like i expect it not to work because it's a low quality it's just this is a video game that's how that you know that they're of course they're gonna have to cut corners to make D fit but they keep but not no. cutting those corners it's yeah. crazy yeah <laughs> i mean you know it took them what three years to make the whole game well no it took them more than three years but three years ago was when they released a trailer so you have to imagine how much more time they put into just like everything <laughs> oh yeah the bmt boys tricked me into buying it day one of early access when it, it was an empty game <laughs> <laughs> leaf wouldn't shut up about it he got me all excited i bought it there was nothing in it because it was you know it was, it, it was the nautilus ship was it <laughs> that was the entirety and i paid i paid full price he tricked me absolutely baited and, and destroyed yeah. It, it worked out, though, because now I get that $10 <laughs> collector's <laughs> edition for free. Yeah. And you know what? Depending on when you bought it, I'm sure it probably it, I'm not going to get into economics. It probably would have objectively costed you more because of the way inflation works. <laughs> Hell yeah. So it was a good investment. Yeah, that's a victory in my books. Oh, thank but. God it ended up being a phenomenal game that hurt real bad if that were like Fallout 76 that I'd been sitting on. Yeah, that'd be a true travesty. <laughs> but 
No, I've I've almost described it like I've described Baldur's Gate as D and D, but if it was a video game, but mm. now it feels like D and D and The Sims combined. Yeah, kind of. It, it's it's very horny D and D. Yeah, like yeah, that badass. It's like it's like the horniest group of serious D and D players who still care about the D and D aspect. Yeah, but they're still very horny. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Me and my friends, we walked through like a goblin village or something. And then Mm -hmm. inexpl and we were like we were like stealth killing everything. And then randomly we just a fight just started and we got absolutely reamed. We were like, what the fuck happened? Who might have alerted somebody? Do we think we woke up like a bear that alerted everybody else? No. What happened is we walked into a goblin village and our guy is a druid and he was a bear. And somebody was trying to talk to him, I think. But because he was a bear, they couldn't talk to him and decided they wanted war. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm like, what the fuck? That's amazing. Um, So I love that game. Yeah, that's a I'm glad that my friends encourage me to play it, even if I am stupid at D&D and don't really know what's going on all the time, Mm -hmm. because it's also just like it's a closer bonding experience with them than than other games. And, uh, you know, it's it's a game that's well worth what you have to pay for it oh uh, it, it's probably the most worth game that i can think of in a long time yeah like unquestionably worth the money yeah so no th- those are those are some th- your list of game genres that you play very respectable <laughs> not like you needed my respect or anything <laughs> uh, just whatever's fun yeah exactly yeah i'm not I don't, i'm not a genre guy yeah if I like a game, I like it. So, yeah, it's like I'm not a music genre guy. If I like a song, I'm going to listen to it for crying out loud. Yeah, same. But yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, and then, I mean, lastly, it's just like what what other hobbies do you have that don't include like, you know, having to manage all the content that you work with? Uh, so I don't know. I guess <laughs> I've always just regular nerd shit, you know, been into like. <laughs> Board game nights, uh, big and I used to be big into like escape rooms before COVID, things like that. But I don't know. I guess just consuming content <laughs> when, I'm not, when I'm not making it. Yeah, fair enough. You're like, this is yeah. my downtime. I'm just gonna chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, so not too much. Most a lot of my free time now is editing. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. It's always it's always like just an interesting thing to look at because it's like if 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 you're somebody who has a nine to five job or an eight to five, you know, mm-hmm. if you somebody who has a 40 hour a week job and then they also do this kind of stuff that would potentially it can't be closely akin to a job just because of the amount of time you have to put into it, even if you're not making any money in a lot of people's contexts. Yeah, it's like, well, even if they do find joy out of recording, editing, doing voiceover, doing Twitch, whatever that kind of stuff is like, they find that fun and enjoyable. I don't know if mm-hmm. I would necessarily consider that they're off time. So it's like, well, you have this pocket of space. What do you do with it? Yeah, no, and that's I guess that's when uh, meeting up with friends, doing a bad movie night, things like that <laughs> Love a bad movie night. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Pulling an audible best bad movie you've seen. I mean, the best bad movies, the room, but that's, you know, kind of a basic answer. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it deserves the spot, I think. But the best non room is a movie called Jim Cotta. Which is about it's an 80s movie about an Olympic gymnast who does gymnastics karate. <laughs> it, it is batshit insane. In the best of it's the perfect bad movie. It hit it checks all the boxes. <laughs> nice. But yeah, if you're looking for one to start, do the room. It's it's the best bad movie by far. Fair enough. Yeah. I oh yeah, this just this this title is <laughs> the, the, yeah, this <laughs> it's as, it's so much dumber than you can imagine. <laughs> It's so much dumber than anything you're thinking that it is. Fair enough. Yeah. I also, I, th- I think my perception of this kind of stuff is flawed because I don't actively seek out movies that I don't care about all that much, but also mm. I think I have a really, a really hard time discerning what I think is a bad movie. Uh, yeah. I, these, this one you would know. Um, 
Like, I'm, I don't get me wrong. I'm not a film critique expert. I I couldn't tell you what makes a good movie or a bad movie. Uh, but whenever you look at a movie that someone made and you're supposed to feel like sad or dramatic and your reaction is laughing. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I qualify that as. Yeah, I think there was a thing once that I said where I was like, I was like, whoever decided that Adam Sandler needs to be put in serious roles needs to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Oh, yeah. And then it's there's a whole distinction of fun, bad movies and just boring ones. Yeah. Ones that are like, yeah, so bad that they're f- at least enjoyable to watch. And then ones where you're just like, this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, our like, rule is you, someone had to be proud of it at some point, because if, if you if it's a bad movie that everyone knows is bad, that's how you get Sharknado. Those movies are lame. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like you put all this production budget into wasting your money. <laughs> Yeah, the the reason the trend is fun is it's because it's fun mocking something that someone tried their best and came so objectively far from the goal. <laughs> yeah. It's a very mean spirited thing at heart, but <clears throat> oh, there's so much fun. Yeah, and it also just makes for a better experience than, like you said, somebody who's just abusing the fact that people. It's like um, oh, there's one specific I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's like those those movies slash shows slash content on the internet that you know people deliberately okay, I guess the best equi- uh, the best thing I can equivocate it to is like people who deliberately do things on the internet to piss people off because they know that increases mm. engagement. Yeah, I could yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, where it's it, like it feels you know. even less in- genuine than that it's, it's just some hollywood like they want the kids like bad movies and then it's some hollywood guy okay well hear me out what if the sharks like smoked weed <laughs> like that's that's what i see is like sharknado manufactured bad movies yeah one of those ones as where opposed they... to Bim Cotta, which was someone absolutely doing an insane amount of cocaine in the 80s like you can see the thought process behind the executives. They saw the Olympics. They saw this Kurt Thomas. Everyone loves him. I'm going to make him a star. <laughs> yeah. you, you can see the thought process and it wasn't. Let's make a bad movie. It's <laughs> let's make some cash. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just like we we are going to deliberately make something bad because we know that that will attract in people who want to watch it because it's bad, but then Mm -hmm. also show that we put in enough effort to trying to catch your attention, even though it's in just like the lamest way possible. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I want to see someone who doesn't know better, try their best and fall flat. Yeah, exactly. I'll cheer for them. If they keep making movies, I don't hold it against them personally. I just want to, I want to watch something where you're used to seeing this respectable veneer. There's, you know, production assistants. There's a whole army of people's making it so that these mistakes don't reach you. So when they do, it's especially great. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what we're all about here is deliberately making fun of people who are very earnestly <laughs> trying to do good work. <laughs> yeah, you know it yeah so i guess that's I, on that note we're ending it off on jim cotta how do you feel about that how does how does ending on jim cotta feel uh it, it feels good there's no coming back from jim cotta <laughs> okay fair enough fair enough yeah well on on the note of jim cotta i i do appreciate you taking some time out of your day to, to humor me on this uh i think it's again this is yeah. the, kind of the only time where i'm like trying to work i was i was just you know just trying to see like the ins and outs of how things function within you and your crew of people as well as trying to actually get a handful of pointers here and there i'm not trying to unlock any secrets i'm just trying to be a better <laughs> i'm just trying to be better <laughs> yeah well i guess you or anyone listening if you ever have specifics there's no trade secrets or nothing happy to share i it's it'd be crazy. I, it's insane that anyone would gatekeep that. I mean, welcome to the internet. Unfortunately, that is. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, people will. I guess be, people will gatekeep the most lucrative of things, like or not even gate like gatekeeping, but in a way that's like deliberately just spreading bad information that yeah. doesn't actually help anybody. So unfortunately, that happens. But you can rest easy knowing that this fine young goose here <laughs> is not one of them. <laughs> so. 
So no, oh, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was a pleasure to 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 have this this discussion. Probably wasn't the most. It, it didn't. I guess it didn't really follow the most traditional formula of what I normally do. But it's not like it really <laughs> matters. I don't care personally. Yeah. Um, well, you're not. Uh, I'm not a traditional guy. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's reasonable. And so, but yeah, no, this, this is a good talk. Um, I'm not, I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm not just going to end it off on a hook right there. I mean, I just, you know, if you have anything that you do want to plug that you think people might care about, then you're more than free to, to go ahead and do that. That's same stuff I've been talking about. Check out YouTube, check out the Twitch. About it. <laughs> That's all I got. Yeah, fair enough. I also forget that like, especially in your YouTube, you like, you're like, all right, now that you're here, Go look at everybody else that happens to be in here. So mm-hmm. you've done the easy work of being able to, or you've done the hard work of doing that. And then they, they have to do the other part of the hard work, which is showing up to the goddamn videos and then going from there. Um, I mean, I can, even, yeah. I could even probably say is coming from the perspective of a person. Cause like I was still watching the smite videos, even when I wasn't playing smite. Cause most of me, my friends stopped playing it for a while. So yeah, as you do, yeah. So that might, Never. so that, you know, that might be some kind of endorsement for people to examine it, even if you don't operate in the smite scene, because this is easily the most insular, um, I've gotten in regards to talking about like gaming related things. And so, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's just a natural uh, consequence of how that happens. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's where we're at. Um, if you know, it's funny if, if you're looking for me, I actually might be in his, both his comment section and his Twitch uh, chat sometimes just saying very very much outlandish shit but not in like a way that would get me banned in a way that's like I'm oh. sorry what the fuck did you just say <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be there but I've also got a few YouTube channels I've got a Twitch stream of my own I'm on Apple Music and Spotify if you just search up DJ Serial Sauce on the internet it will more than likely give you exactly <laughs> what you are looking for because what kind of person would have that kind of a name on the internet other than me it's brand recognition baby precisely yeah exactly Google boom you will not find me ever <laughs> but if you put the 555 at the end of it then you will find exactly what you're looking for yeah, then you'll find me. Yeah, so so go do that. Go check out all the links because there aren't nearly as many in this one as there normally are. Thank goodness. Um, why am I saying <laughs> things? That sounds rude. It's um, fine. I got you. Yeah, we're fine. And um, I don't even have anything funny to say. It was probably going to be something about geese. Geese.